But of course, we're across transfer stories. It's that time. The window is open and Mr. Crook is working hard and fast on those. Uh, Alex, what have you got? Who will we start with? Well, should we start as we've got Constantine here uh, with a player based in Germany at Bayern Munich in the form of uh, Matthias De Ligt. I'm told that's getting hotter uh, between Manchester United and Bayern. Is that your understanding as well, a player that Eric Ten Hag knows well? Yeah, yes, uh, it's it's getting so hot that we we might burn our fingers now. No, but it's it's, it's getting really hot. So so Bayern are actually ready to to sell um, Matthijs de Ligt um, and also Dario Upamecano, basically, who's right now playing for France, of course. Um, but de Ligt, um, he, he is. They are open to selling him. Um, they are demanding. 50 million euros, 42 million pounds plus add-ons. They once uh, signed him from Juventus for a transfer fee of uh, 57 million pounds. So they want to get at least a large portion of the money back because he's 24 and he has played pretty well for Bayern. Bayern just, uh, they want to not make a clean cut, but they want to overhaul their squad. They want to sign new players. They are closing in on signing Jonathan Tarr, the German international from Bayer Leverkusen, and he would be the one who pl replaces then Matthijs de Ligt. I'm Look, surprised, sorry, Alec, I'm surprised that they would want to move him on because you're suggesting he's done well. I covered both of the semi-finals, and if he'd have played in the first semi-final for Bayern instead of Kim, was it, playing in his position, I think they'd have won that and gone to the final or maybe won the final from there. Yes, um, and uh, I mean, there's something to be said about uh, De Ligt's, um, let's say, overall performance for Bayern being a bit uh, a roller coaster, um, because also in the 2022-23 season, the second half of the season, he was the best player in the Bundesliga. The first half, not so much. So, um, and, and sometimes what might be a little bit off-putting, um, not to character him or color him in a bad light, but um, what might be off-putting sometimes that he's always demanding to be kind of the defensive boss. He wants to be the be-all, end-all of, of the defense. And um, when he's not doing that well, <laughs> that might uh, come... Uh, <laughs> Get, get a, uh, yeah, my, it's a big ask. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, sometimes coaches are like, why, why, why is he talking that way, actually? I mean, he should do better on the pitch. Um, when he's doing well, yes, he can still be a, a great uh, center half. And I think um, what Manchester United want to do is they want to sign a right-footed center half and a left-footed center half. They just, um, Rafael Varane, just, just departed from the club, and Matej De Ligt as a, a right-footed centre-half would be, I guess, a major signing Alex, for them. it makes me wonder, if he's not good enough for Bayern Munich, why would he be good enough for Manchester United? Well, actually, from a United perspective, Constantine has uh, filled me with a bit more confidence there because he's suggesting that actually he's done well for Bayern Munich, and Stuart says that uh, had he played in the Champions League semi-final, maybe it would have been them at Wembley and not Dortmund because, yeah, I, I was along the same lines as you. It's another player that Eric Ten Hag has worked with previously, and we were told yeah. when they overhauled the, the, the structure at the top of the of the club at the boardroom level that maybe Ten Hag would have less of a say on transfers. But if he'd done that well, they wouldn't be selling him. Uh, oh, is that fair? It, it, the, the, the thing with Bayern right now is that, that uh, after that season, the first trophy-less season since 2012, so, I mean, think about it, um, they, they just... The, what Max Ebel did, especially now as, as the head of recruiting, head of management, everything, he's the head of everything, basically. He just looked at the entire squad and said, all right, we have to, we have to make a change. We have to sell a few players and bring a new, fresh blood. So who could we sell? All right, Matthijs de Ligt was a roller coaster ride so far with him. We would sell him if, a, if a, the right offer comes in and we sign a new defender to bring in a new what it is like, like a, like a chief defender, main defender, like like someone who's who's actually guiding the entire back line, and that would be Jonathan Tarr now. And I think again, Jim, it highlights that the value for money maybe that English clubs see in bringing in foreign players, players from overseas, because we know that Manchester United very keen to sign Jared Branthwaite. Everton wants seventy million, north of seventy million, I'm told. 42 million the price for Delict, an established international, someone who's played for some top clubs. With Branthwaite, he's had a brilliant season for Everton, no disputing that, but you're paying for potential. So maybe United might think this deal is, is maybe better for yeah. the offers. Uh, earlier on, um, Alex, we were talking about England fans. We had three of them in here in the studio with us earlier this morning. And the Newcastle fans. So pin your ears back because news on Anthony Gordon. What is the update on this fella? Because he, he's with Southgate in England at the moment. He did well for Newcastle towards the end of the season. We're now hearing Liverpool. And we're now also now hearing that the boy's head might have been turned by that Liverpool talk. That's been reported. I've not had that uh, told to me by anybody. So I, I can't confirm those reports. He did have a good season for Newcastle. 11 goals scored, 12 assists. Obviously forced his way at the expense of 
Jack Grealish and Marcus Rashford into this England squad. Probably hasn't played as much as he would have wanted to or as some England fans would want him to. Uh, my latest information, I'm going to run this in my transfer notebook this afternoon, is that Newcastle keen to get Anthony Gordon to sign a new contract. I think he's got two years left on his current deal. Uh, yes, there was some tentative interest from in Liverpool, but I'm not convinced so far it's gone as far as maybe uh, as has been reported. Obviously, they did sell some players before that PSR deadline, Newcastle. And I think they're now in a situation where they want to keep hold of people like Gordon and Isak and, and Gimar Reich and, and have a really good go at trying to qualify for Europe once again. I mean, sure, can that happen? You're on international duty. You've been with players umpteen times, mm. no doubt. And there's been talk about them back home, wherever you've been. And as a result of that, the head can get turned. Well, I, I think you get friendships within England squads by players from different teams. Uh, so that happens. It happened to me in, I think it was 1989-90. I remember Brian Robson coming to me and saying, look, our manager's interested in bringing you to Manchester United. What are your thoughts and all that? And in those days, you, you there wasn't, a, like it is now, there's free-flowing. If someone's interested in you, they know about it. The agents are into you. Everyone's into you. You know straight away. Sure. It, going back a few years, you know, if the captain of England comes up to you and says, my club are interested in you, you think to yourself, mm, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Southampton. We get news in Southampton this lunchtime. Uh, yeah, potentially. Uh, they've, they've been quite busy so far in this transfer. And they brought Adam Lallana uh, back to the club uh, to give a bit more Premier League experience to dressing room. Uh, Matt O'Reilly, uh, a player that you've probably seen play with Celtic. At, uh, Celtic, somebody that Russell Martin knows from MK Dons. £20 million the fee. That isn't the issue from what I'm told. Uh, the wage demands could be, but certainly a player that Russell Martin is keen to sign. So too Nathan Wood, a uh, centre-back from Swansea. So certainly they're backing the manager. And we expect confirmation any time now that Russell Martin has signed a new three-year contract as a reward for leading them to promotion last season. I mean, to be fair to Russell Martin, Stuart, what an achievement. Did brilliantly, didn't he? Coming right through and now they've got Premier League football. Certainly has. And it's not easy dropping out the Premier League uh, into clubs like Southampton, Leicester and whatever. The expectation on him is massive and I think he's done a fantastic job. Lean. be interesting to see what he does next year. And uh, I think the three promoted clubs will certainly give a better ask of themselves than the th this year, last year was a disaster. I've got to really. say to you, Alex, I, I don't think... Russell Martin could work for a better boss. I interviewed uh, Dragon Solak, uh, the Serbian owner of Southampton at Wembley, when they clinched it. There's a guy who's well, well across financial fair play, restrictions, what he can and can't do. But what he wants to do for Southampton is, is considerable. Yeah, they almost had to take a step backwards, didn't they, to, to come forward again? Because that, let's make no bones of bones about it their first year in charge was a disaster you know hiring Nathan Jones as manager sacking Ralph Hasenhutl um, then giving it to Ruben Saez who, who clearly wasn't up to it in, in terms of the Premier League they ended up being relegated that was a situation that was utterly avoidable they've gone down into the championship they've got a manager now with a defined playing style he's brought the feel good factor back to the football club and uh, it, it's worked in their favour so long may it continue Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.